Future Proof is sponsored by Equipping Young Adults for Life, Inspiring Student Resilience, Championing Hope. Hello and welcome to Future Proof. Thank you so much for joining me, Sarah Hopwood, as I continue these, what is effectively business um, television programs, looking at the power of emotional intelligence and how it can help us to think smarter and better, how it can help us to respond rather than react. And this whole series four is dedicated to education. Uh, if you were watching last time, I ran through 10 negative mindsets that won't help us moving forward and can certainly hold us back. And as I was reading them, uh, I knew myself that years ago I held on to some of those negative mindsets. And the first one is, um, I've written it up here now, is um, that everyone else is better than me. And if you watched last time, I had listed them all, but this is the first one that we're going to look at. And uh, everyone else is better than me is something that plagued me uh, for most of, not just my childhood, it well took me into my adult life too. And the reason why I was because I had two very bright brothers, um, I just had a different way of thinking to other people, I didn't fit in the educational mould and so I just kept getting example after example that I wasn't very good for whatever reason. So all those examples then became evidence to support the fact that I wasn't very good which then endorsed my mindset and it made it um, stronger and stronger. It, I, I got, if you like, my belief system was um, uh, degraded. Um, and, and became stronger and stronger in the negative that I really wasn't as good as everybody else. And it was well into my you know, late 30s, probably even 40s, when that belief system was challenged. And for me, the challenge came from reading Howard Gardner. If you don't know Howard Gardner, do please take a look at him. Uh, he doesn't ask if you're intelligent, he asks how you're intelligent. And just that question changed my life. And I suddenly realised everybody else wasn't better than me. Everybody else had strengths in other areas. There was no need for me to feel jealous or upset. My duty was just to find where my strengths were. And once I started changing tack rather than comparing and thinking that I wasn't good by comparison, I then actually went on my own journey to find out exactly what I was good at. And um, it completely transformed my way of thinking. Right at the beginning of this series, I did talk about work in education. I talked about working from a manual, which I showed you, where I have um, taken children into education, uh, never charged for it, uh, uh, grabbed a group of children, take them into business, and where they've run um, problem-solving skills to find a problem for that business, and then presented to the board of directors um, at the end of the week and indeed um, heads of school were there, parents were invited and it was part of the pro bono that um, I've done in education with my husband Paul and anybody who attended they always got a certificate and uh, which is rather snazzy and we also have them landscape as well. So I'm going to use some of these tools now to unpack, if that's the right word, why it is that we think that other people are better than us. I think evidence, um, which is reasonably well known, is that our belief systems are usually formed in early childhood. So usually by the time you're seven-ish, you kind of got quite a few cemented thoughts in your mind. And uh, very often up until then, we believe anything that comes our way. And then as we get older and certainly going through into the teens, that's when we can sometimes challenge things, challenge authority um, and have a, a challenging mind. But there are some things that we absorb and take in that we just take as read, we take as given. And this is an example. If you, when you were younger, or were made to feel that you weren't as good as other people. And, and I'm not into blaming, we can't blame people for this. Sometimes it is just something that, that happens. And uh, for me, I wasn't particularly um, 
clued into school. I turned up, but I didn't quite know why I was there. Um, I remember once really sort of um, almost cross with myself and I remember once studying for a test on the bus going into school. I'd never really done that before and, um, and I studied for it. I actually came top and because I hadn't um, performed like that before, there was a big kind of question mark and I could see people rummaging around, seeing who I was sat next to, to see um, how I might have cheated because nobody could believe that I had actually um, done well in the test. So what that did to me because of where my belief system was, was it pushed me back? And I was going, see, told you, even when I do will do well, no one believes me. And, and it just became like a vicious circle of negative thinking. And the other thing that really took me by surprise is when we have negative thinking like that, it can actually be a comfort to us. So what is quite bizarre for me is that when I went back from this test and I said, see, no one believes me anyway, and I went back into the camp of everybody else is better than me, there was something comforting in a way of settling back into something that was familiar. So the real challenge of actually changing what we're saying about ourselves and finding a new familiarity and confidence in something that is good rather than something that is negative. So there's two tools that I'm going to talk you through and um, the first one is called the magic wand and we use this in business as well and when I'm in education I sometimes use quite a pictorial um, example of it um, in this uh, manual that I was showing you earlier. Yes, it features in there, but it is not as pictorial. This is, and there's big broad lines where people can write down their magic wand. So what do I mean by magic wand? So magic wand means that if you think of Walt Disney and you change the pumpkin into a carriage so that Cinderella can get to the ball, the magic wand is where you can go around and literally, like with your magic dust, change things into what you want or imagine them changed. So the question is, if there was no barrier of money, time, relationships, geography, energy, emotions, um, food, air and water, if there were no barriers at all stopping you from having what it is that you want, the question is, make a list. What is the list of your magic wand things that you want in your life? So if we go back to me and my belief system of everybody else is better than me, what would have featured on my magic wand list would have been, um, I wish people appreciated you know, something I was good at as well as what my brothers were good at. Um, I wish when I had done well in that test they congratulated me rather than questioned me. Um, I wish that I believed I was good. Um, I wish that I didn't feel so um, despondent. You know, you can actually watch it, the head goes down. Uh, I wish that I could be very, very good at one thing. That would be on my list. Um, what would be on your list? And that's the task going into the break, is sit with a piece of paper and write down what would you put on your magic wand list if there was no barrier no barriers at all of time, money, time, money, relationships, energy, emotion, geography, uh, food, air and water. There are no barriers. What is it that you want? And you can even go wacky. Um, before now, I've even said to people, why don't you start with a hotel on the moon and then come back? Because as wacky as that is, if you get your imagination going very, very wild, if you like, outside of um, perimeters of possibility, then when you come back, you can then look at things and go, do you know what? I thought that was wacky, but looking at it again, I reckon I can probably get that. And that's a really, really good tool to use. Just before going into the break, and as you're thinking of what is in your magic wand list, I also want to invite you to stop comparing. So comparison really is very, very destructive. Um, we are not here to compare, and as soon as you start to compare, then you end up in really muddy, muddy waters because we're not designed to be the same as um, everybody else. We're designed to just be good in our uniqueness and good in what we're good at. I invite you to go and look, dig out Howard Gardner, 
who doesn't ask if you're intelligent, he asks how you are intelligent. And he talks about linguistic intelligence, he talks about numerical, he talks about um, uh, interpersonal, personal, intrapersonal, intrapersonal, sorry it's writing and speaking, um, aesthetics, kinesthetic and then he also talks about moral and spiritual intelligence and remember all of these are intelligences and we have a selection of some or all of them and the question is not whether you are intelligent the question is where does your intelligence sit and every single one of us has an intelligence that sits in here somewhere so write your magic wand list and i'll see you in just a moment <laughs> 